if you're looking at upcoming decisions, I think Mitchell Robinson this year, I've been happy with him. I think he's – how how do you feel about Mitch's play overall? Not perfect, but I feel like I'm more happy than, than not happy with him. I think he's taken a step back in terms of being a shot blocker, but I think that was a necessary part of his progression as an overall defensive player. So his block rate's the lowest it's ever been, but I think that's a good thing because he's fouling less. And I think he's kind of in the process, John, of finding that balance between being that disciplined defender that Tom Thibodeau is trying to get into his head and being a premier shot blocker. And I think the more he does it, the more he'll find that balance. And I think eventually he'll get back to blocking more shots without fouling. But I think he necessarily, it's kind of like Daniel Jones this year, right? He needed to take a step back <laughs> to not turn the ball over as much, even if it means fewer big plays, because the turnovers are worse. The fouls were worse than the fouls are more harmful than the blocks are helpful, right? So yeah. he has to cut down on the block shots a little bit to prevent the fouls. And then as he learns how to do that more consistently, more naturally, where he doesn't have to try not to foul, that's when the block shots will come back. So, yeah, I think it's been a really good season for him. It's a big part of his progression. And I think you have to be happy with it. No question. I, I agree. Um, so, OK, we're 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 happy with Mitch. Um his he th- now they could keep him on a very cheap deal for next year and then he becomes an unrestricted free agent which i think is something people have assumed like oh they're never gonna let that happen mm-hmm. i wonder at this point if like hey you know what let's just maybe go ahead and pay the guy the 1.5 or 2 million dollars next year and then we'll see what happens after that um with the thinking being like you um trying to think of the oh here's a f- another football comparison running backs right let's just draft the running back Get him on his cheap deal. Is that what the center is in the NBA now? The the the, the running back equivalent. I don't. Yeah, it's, it's in, unless you get a Jokic or a you know one of these guys, right? It's hard, man. I mean, I'm not going to say centers are a dime a dozen. I'm not ones that can be all defensive team type players, which I think Mitch still can be and is getting closer. Now, look, he's never going to be because he plays in a league with Rudy Gobert and Joel Embiid. So that's probably never going to happen until those guys either drop off or whatever. But look, he's he's good and. But do you ever pay that guy close to, you know, max money? I mean, I think oh. no. I mean, I think no. like an 18 million, you know, so, Julius Randle range. Right. So that's the thing. I was actually I was watching some of the Pacers game last night. Um, they're playing the Raptors and there's Miles Turner, who's making 18 million dollars a year. Right. A contract with which, if you believe what was reported, Danny Ainge could have just taken on and was like, no, I'm good. I'd, I'd rather not pay my center $18 million. And I'm watching Miles Turner and he, you know, he blocks his shots. Um, so bonus went out early in that game. They still won. Turner was doing everything, you know, defensively down low. He was making a little, made a little baby hook shot. He can make a three. That dude's making 18 million. And it's not looked at as like some crazy good contract. No. Now I look at Mitch. I'm like, okay. He doesn't do anything else. And look, I've been a Mitch fan. You know, I've been a Mitch fan. Yeah, me too. I'm still a Mitch fan for what he is. But we have to start to acknowledge like, okay, this is this is what he is. Maybe improves defensively. And like, that's a guy that I'm not sure. Forget about 18. I'm like, you know, is he a, is he a $10 million a year player? Ideally at this level. And I'm not even sure I know the answer to that question. Not yet. And that's why maybe you let him get the unrestricted free agency. I mean, if, if you decide that you're willing to pay him a substantial amount, don't pay him before you have to because you're going to get the because you're going to have your bird rights on him anyway, and you, and you can match whatever teams are going to throw at him, and you can keep him right. Not technically match, but you know what I mean. You can you, you you can go over the cap to sign him. So, yeah, I think Mitch is a tough one. I, look, that's why people that were you know losing their minds about how could you trade Mitchell Robinson to move up in this draft, and I'm like, guys, you know what? I hate to tell you, if they really think. And I'm, this was not my opinion. This was my theoretical. If they really think LaMelo Ball is like the guy and is going to be like a star point guard in this league and it costs you Mitchell Robinson, adios. I mean, see ya. Sorry. I mean, the position's just so much more important that you have to make a deal that way. And I like Mitch too. I think he, I think he's a really good defensive player. I think he helps the team win games. But um, look, you get to this offseason, maybe Mitch gets packaged in a trade with somebody and, and you get another wing. Because John, that, look, this team needs another multifaceted wing that can shoot, score, and create their own shot. Yeah. That's what they need. Assuming they're, they're going to roll with quickly as the point guard, that's what they need. They need an R.J. Barrett that can shoot. That's what they need, okay? <laughs> to match with him and, and to get have one of those lying around lineup. somewhere. It's, it's, and by the way, I think you kind of need a center that can shoot if you're going to play – 
Julius Randle and R.J. Barrett together. Can you play those guys together and have a good offense if your center can't stretch the floor? I don't I, know if you can. Let's be honest. I think and you have so. Three non-shooters. If the yeah, we're, we're obviously we're not even talking about Alfred Payton because I think both me and you were of the opinion it's a it's just a matter of I I think he's going to continue to start games actually I but you know we're 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 assuming they eventually get a point guard who could make shots right the fact that you waited this long to mention his name during this podcast what, what is, is actually to, a minor miracle what is there to say at this <laughs> point I mean, like literally what is there to say about Alfred Payton I don't. We all see it every night. It's tip season. He's not stupid. I just, you know, I, I just don't think he wants to start a rookie who's, you know, not really playing a position he's comfortable with, but whatever. We don't have to talk about that. Um, I said his name. That was enough. But no, I, I, I agree with you. They need to figure out a way to get more spacing on the floor. It's why I brought up Mitch and it's why I'm, I, I want to talk about topping in that context because all this stuff fits together. Right. And I think just to maybe to bring it home, um, now is the, it's been I'm not saying that the last year has been easy for Leon Rose, but now is the tough part because now you have to take this interesting collection of guys who some of you know good stuff has been happening and you have to turn it into a basketball team because um, if you want to compete for a championship, forget about compete for a championship. Let me take that back. If you want to act like you're on the road to competing for a championship, you got to have a path to a top ten offense, and that path is doesn't exist right now. So um, I'm, I'm as curious to see what they do as anyone. 